I would say BC, as far as North America goes, we're driving a new way of building. And that's everything from high performance, sustainability, energy efficiency, and now prefab. We really want to reduce the carbon impacts, both the embodied as well as the uh, operational. So this project, we really looked down towards the 2030 targets, built a really robust wall assembly, had a ton of learnings from the theoretical side, working with industry experts to really understand the building science and what this entails. The analogy has been given a thousand times. If you go to a BMW dealership and you're given two options, I'd like a factory built car, or I'd like every single one of those parts shipped to my front yard and assembled for me in my driveway. It's pretty obvious which one you're gonna choose. It's simple, it's easy. We make the drawings in the shop and we produce really energy efficient homes. Boss Building Offsite Sustainable Systems is really a driver for the entire market. Uh, the intention is that everybody can build with Boss. Through this whole process, we've sort of got a dynamic panel. Um, it's a standard set of details. Uh, I think the critical piece is how they connect to each other. Tangibly, what we have available on our website would be downloads, typically PDFs, that are totally free with a sample plans, the design rationale, and then it gets into the actual detail of how a panel goes together, the structural details, and we've also done all the thermal modeling, so you can input that into your energy model. All the prototype houses that are being built right now hit a passive house level of performance, so they would easily meet step code five in that place, and that's what we've designed it for. It's really hard to compare stick frame or site frame versus offsite construction in the first place, because offsite construction, especially closed panels, are doing a whole set of trades. Like there's like seven or eight trades that you're putting into one. An open wall panel would come to site where you can still access the cavities. So it's open. You can see inside the structure, you can see on the walls, they'll typically have exterior sheathing on it. A closed panel goes the next step, and we're gonna install all the insulation, and we're gonna close it up with all the membranes. So Collective Carpentry started as a general contracting company, and nine years ago we started moving it towards building prefab. The move towards prefab really came about from starting to build with higher performing materials, um, ordering a lot of materials from Europe, you know, things that are expensive, things that need to be stored well, and really just wanting to get ourselves out of the cold and into an indoor environment so we could do our best work. Prefab can come in many different forms, and we've just always been committed to building to, you know, passive house standard for one, but just generally higher performing homes using low carbon materials. We construct our panels off-site in, in the confines of a controlled environment in the shop. We're producing a panel that is already insulated with dense packed cellulose and wrapped in an airtight high performance membrane. So what we end up with is panels of a, of a house, and then we assemble those on site with a crane and just placing them into position. So, you know, what would take a site crew probably, you know, months to, to, to do on site, we'll be able to assemble that house there in three, four or five days, depending on the size of it, the complexity of it. Being in the business for 40 years, you know, Winton Homes has been providing manufactured components to the building industry. You know, it did start with trusses, that's we were a truss plant to begin with. We migrated into providing wall packages for folks. Now we're getting into cassette floors, prefabricated wall components, and essentially the entire building envelope. So that's going to be able to address a number of the uh, limitations that we're experiencing in the industry right now as it pertains to labor shortages, quality, um, you know, repeatability. Um, safety. So we did secure funding for the Clean BC project. We were challenged to create a net zero five ready building envelope. We gained a lot of valuable learnings from this project. The walls are very, very thick, uber insulated, so they get very heavy and they're hard to manipulate and build actually on site. So it's really conducive to actually building in a factory environment where we're able to keep quality control. Um, this is where the prefabrication process really shines because we're able to do a lot of this labor in-house prior to it coming to site. So it goes up nice and fast, there's less waste on site, and uh, you get a better product. 
Part of the project that we did with CleanVC is, is a deliverable was this test building um, where we took the theories and we then went into the shop floor and really took those principles and put them into reality. So we tried a, a variety of air tightness strategies, taking into consideration vapor control layers, letting that wall dry towards the outside, um, really create a healthy environment with an assembly that's going to stand the test of time. Today we're sitting on the north slopes of Fraser Lake, British Columbia, and uh, this is a beautiful site. It's about 50 acres of, you know, wooded forest, and this is a net zero energy step code level five home. So this is a high performer. This will be a really comfortable home to live in, in all of our inclement weather that we get here in northern BC. This home has a double framed wall, so we get to pick and choose just exactly what that R value needs to be to meet the model, meet the performance without exceeding it and incurring uh, exorbitant or extra costs that don't need to be there. We live in a region that's entirely compressed by weather. Case in point right now, we're in breakup season, which is when the frost comes out of the ground and we're not allowed to haul certain things on certain roads. So when we do get that time to get going, it's like we really need to get going. Compressing the bulk of the construction, the structural part of it into a few days instead of a few weeks is really pivotal for us at that point. Every day counts, so, uh, so it certainly is a, a great help in that respect. With the CleanBC funding and within our application, the early phase, if I remember back, was a lot of research, reaching out to marginalized groups. What are they looking for? in a project that is culturally appropriate versus just sort of saying, this is a building that would work for you. Then we started to work in what we called our integrated design process. We hired a number of consultants, structural engineer, envelope engineer, architect. The funding allowed us to put together videos, workshops, and really educate and spread the message about what offsite construction and BOSS could do for the industry. The biggest revelation is virtual design for construction, literally, having your builder build your project in 3D. I know builders that have had to change their financial model because they get less change orders because they're doing work up front. For a homeowner, for a designer, that's good. You know, people that work in a prefab environment for a long time inevitably become, you know, software enhanced carpenters. It becomes a part of their toolkit. So we will take architectural plans, engineering drawings, specifications, other information, and we'll build a 3D model, which a lot of people refer to as the digital twin. You know, it becomes an exact replica of what we will see on site. We're really looking at the placement of each stud, uh, the placement of each joist member. We can start to do clash detection. We can look to see where the HVAC lines are running and we can work around those HVAC lines or vice versa. The HVAC lines will see where the beam is running and work around the beam. I think the biggest benefit with choosing collective carpentry was the energy efficient aspect of the home, uh, but also the ease of build. Uh, it went pretty quick from a pad on the ground to a home in two and a half days. It was almost like watching them put a Lego host together. They snapped the pieces together, secured them, and we had a home very soon after. My partner and I had already drawn sketches of homes before we even had a, a plot of land to build a home on. And so that moved us away from modular homes and into prefab homes. Prefab definitely will play a big role in the steps to take to build an energy efficient home. Is it the only way? Probably not, but I have a hard time believing there's a more efficient way after watching this house being built. We have a housing shortage and we need to start meeting the needs to find places for people to live. But we also can't lose sight of the fact that we need to be building, you know, ultra low energy homes, low carbon homes, so that we can be a part of the climate solution instead of the problem. I mean, you could even say we're getting to the point that it's at, at crisis levels. Like there's just nowhere for people to live. Panelized construction, uh, prefabricated components are gonna help with that for sure. You know, you might need one journeyman carpenter or two journeyman carpenters on a house build instead of four. And so they can spread out. Now four can build two houses instead of one. As these walls become more robust, as the details get more technical, we really need to look at projects that come to the table and allows prefab to really just manufacture. It does then become that kit of parts and we just press go and it's, it's another building X or building Y. And, and the repeatability is, is what's really going to, you know, put more roofs over people's heads. 
labor shortages in our industry is a reality. And I think the number I've been using is it's like 17,500 by 2029 short workers. So that's the net loss. What that stat doesn't show is the loss of experience. If you talk to a carpenter in their 50s, 60s, I guarantee you they have a bad back. Their joints are sore. I got to a point in my career where I wanted to retire. I don't mind working outside, but working outside for the whole winter really takes a toll on your body. But before I got to the point of retiring from carpentry, I got a hold of Rain and enlightened me on the benefits of prefab. What the grant allows us to do is buy machinery that takes care of the really mundane work and the really backbreaking work. It's the work that we don't want people doing. It'll do the nailing, it'll do the cutting, it'll do really low skilled work. I mean, who doesn't like working in a heated shop? when others are freezing their, 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 their buns off out, outside minus 30 temperatures, right? If we're just doing all these stick frames and we deploy crews of 15 people to build a house for two months, is, is it a labor shortage or is it an efficiency issue? Contextually, what it means, I've got a quote right now for a Wyman line. This is a European piece of equipment. It takes three people to run and we'll build 50 homes a year try and do that stick frame. This is an efficiency problem. Those are new jobs, those are good jobs, those are safe jobs, and the efficiency is way higher. This has been in development for over a decade now, and it's got really good momentum, and it's really great to see that successive governments have taken it on and kept the ball rolling, because it's gonna be a good thing. It's actually a joy. It's really fun to be working in a construction sector environment that is excited to innovate and to innovate intelligently and to innovate in ways that improve the availability of higher quality housing for more people. The government, thankfully, is mandating a better building. And I think that building a better building is easier in a prefab method. We need to use more wood. You know, we, we have an abundance of it in the province and it's an amazing resource. We love building with the material and done right in a forestry sense, it's a very sustainable material. It's really important for us to be mindful of the materials that we're pulling in. Uh, it's not just about the operational carbon, but the embodied carbon or the material use um, intensity really does play a big role and we're learning more about that each day. The beauty of a closed panel where we're fully wrapping it up is now it's fully protected. It is ready to go out in the elements. I think every single one of the houses I've ever built stick frame has been completely soaked. We own a moisture meter to make sure our wood gets back to the appropriate temperature and we burn through massive amounts of energy uh, creating saunas in these houses to take our moisture content back to an acceptable level. That doesn't happen in a factory. Prefab has a significant role to play in the sustainability of the construction industry. The controlled environment, the fact that it's software driven, it's, it's heavy on the planning side, just means that material optimization is a really big focus of what we do. We are really proud of the fact that we have very little waste at the end of a project. In some cases, it can just be a wheelbarrow amount of lumber at the end of the day of offcuts, you know, which in our case we use to heat the shop. Building energy efficient buildings needs to happen because of the climate crisis. Building prefab needs to happen because it's a more efficient method. We can't continue to build bespoke buildings one at a time in a different location. It's an industry that's notoriously slow to change, but we're seeing that more and more as a younger generation takes over and they become frustrated with the, the traditional route that's been taken before them. There are certainly days where you know, you're trying to grab nails with mitts on and you're just going, like, what, what are we doing here? Uh, but if you can set a whole wall down with mitts on, it's much better. I would be very surprised if we don't see increasing market penetration for prefabricated home components. And the rate of uptake, I think, will be very much contingent on what does it cost, how quickly can we get it. When you walk into a, a high-performance home, the moment you walk in, it, something feels different. You can really feel it. That's something that we're always excited about because we know that the client doesn't know that until they're in it. So if someone was interested in a, a prefab home, I would tell them 
to go for it. Thinking about all the things you look for in quality, efficiency, for some people even cost, going prefab doesn't limit you there. And probably the most important thing when people think of prefab is they think of design restrictions. And there's no design restrictions at all when it comes to a prefab home. It's hard, it's difficult, it's an uphill battle. But once you've done one, you can't go backwards.